hello y'all i am back again for another video and so before i get into this video i think that i am going to bring up some interesting things issues and also getting into lifestyle issues the way we live the way we could be living and just sometimes a better way to do things so what prompted me to do this video is thinking about some of the subtle ways that um, people can devalue what you're doing and not necessarily on purpose. I don't think every time somebody does like a devaluation of something or something that we're doing, everyone's not always a narcissist, right? But what it is, it's more of a, like a competitive nature. And I believe as an empath, the competitive nature in us, we can control. Because for one, you know, not always or always being competitive in everything you do does not allow true peace. So there has to be balance there. And I don't necessarily believe that always being in competition is a good thing or always comparing yourself to another person however as an empath a lot of times the way you do things will be noticed especially as an empathic person gets older so a lot of times there's this judgment that comes with growing older and maturing and or maturing y'all did y'all hear why i said that maturing or becoming more mature so and there's a lot of stigmatization that comes along with it and i will explain how this works how it happens and just as i go through life what i see in here so here we go so one of the things about me is if you're my friend or relative, I'm usually pretty honest. I mean, I'm not walking out here giving strangers a piece of my mind or anything like that. However, and I like to deal with people that's the same way. I mean, just be honest, like tell the truth. What is your perspective? But one of the things I notice is because I'm not highly narcissistic, the competition thing that's often kind of brought in my midst is not something that I care much about. So what I mean by that is like when someone's being narcissistic and it doesn't mean that they're full blown narcissists. And a lot of times empaths have it too but it's not so extreme. I mean, usually the empathic people that I'm around, they do what they do, not because they're in competition with someone else. They do what they do just because that's what they like to do. Okay. So it's not about I'm getting this brand new TV because somebody else got it. And sometimes no matter what your personality type is, you have to watch getting into trends, right? So Okay, like one of the trends is, okay, we got the eyelashes. Okay, so you really got to think to yourself, as a woman, are you wearing the fake eyelashes because you really like them on you? Do you think it's necessary? Do you think it makes you prettier? Or are you wearing them because it's a trend? And the reason I say this and bring that up is because I see a lot of women and some of them look good with their eyelashes, but I see a lot of women that do not look their best or the eyelashes are not actually making them prettier. A lot of women, in my opinion, they look much more beautiful without the eyelashes. That's just my personal opinion. So what I think happens is the reason I can sit back and say that is because 
I see a lot of women wear the eyelashes. And a lot of times what's happening is they're asking other women, well, girl, how you think these look? If you want to really know how something looks on you, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Go ask somebody that don't wear it. And that's where you will get your honest to God advice. Don't ask another woman that got on some eyelashes how good they look. Go ask somebody that don't wear them. And I will tell you the truth or you're more than likely going to get the truth. So, and that's to me an excellent example of trending. Okay, we had the stretch pants trend. Remember when the stretch pants came out and a lot of women didn't realize that stretch pants without them being covered. Like when I wear stretch pants, I'm a thick girl. So when I wear stretch pants, I cover myself usually or have something kind of like a dress over it, a skirt or a hanging top, okay? So when the stretch pants came out, I mean, I could remember seeing um, morbid, obese women walking down the street in stretch pants, you know, and it's improved. I mean, like I said, things are a trend. So in general, there's this trending and this uh, competitive nature. And so one of the things I am is pretty honest. So getting off the eyelashes, you can wear what you want to wear. I'm just using an example because I believe that the fashion of the eyelashes on women, I don't believe consciously that a lot of women are actually looking in the mirror saying, do this look the best on me? Does this fit me? Is this what I should be wearing? Usually, in my opinion, they're just being worn because it's just a trend. The stars are wearing it. Uh, what we consider to be famous people. And famous people ain't always famous to me. They may be famous to the world, but I'm not following a lot of these people. And I suggest you do the same because... A lot of them are encouraging a lot of wickedness anyway. So in turn, with having the competitive nature, especially if someone's acting narcissistic, and I'm just going to add this too. If you're being very competitive, and when I say competitive, I don't mean like in your work environment and things like that, getting promotions. I'm talking about in your personal life and you are empathic and you find yourself kind of like comparing yourself to other people and stuff like that, or you find yourself looking at somebody else's life, comparing yourself where it's not actually going to improve your life. Because see, being competitive in the nature of it and being narcissistic in that area doesn't mean you're going to improve. However, it's a difference between being competitive and using a situation to motivate you. So if you know someone and they have bought four or five homes, four or five pieces of property, and you say, you know what? I make this amount of money, I'm renting, and I should at least buy one home. So what you're doing in that case, you're using that other person's situation to motivate you. Or if you see their house is cleaner, it may motivate you to go home and clean up, stuff like that. However, being competitive would be, I see that that person has four homes or four pieces of property. And by the end of the year, I want to own more property than they own. That's competitive. And that can backfire. I mean, you can potentially go for that goal and you might, by the end of the year, work five jobs at one time and buy four or five properties and have more properties than that person that you're comparing yourself to. However, guess what? Now you've lost your health. You're in a power chair. You're in a wheelchair. You done had a heart attack. You see how this competitive nature can backfire. So yeah, you got these four or five homes, 
that you ain't going to be able to live in because now you in the hospital and you on your deathbed because you was trying to compete and you work way too many jobs and now you done got yourself sick. And that happens to a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people all over the world have a lot of illnesses. Many of those illnesses were preventable through lifestyle. Sometimes the illnesses, it was just going to happen. Maybe some genetic issue or something like that. I mean, we don't always have control over everything. However, like I said, if you're empathic and you find yourself doing this, you may be just bored. So there's a source of energy that comes in these situations that could be good or bad. So what I try to do is um, my relationships that I've kept a very long time, whether it be with my children, cousins, friends, neighbors, whatever, um, anyone that's been dealing with me for a very long time knows that I'm pretty honest. And see, the reason I try to be as honest as I can, for one, it's a way of um, rebuking negativity. I remember there was a stage in my life where a lot of negative things that were thrown at me, I ignored or didn't say anything or was scared to say something back. I may have been intimidated by the person or the idea or what they were saying. And so I thought when I came into my religion way back then that I was supposed to have this humble, submissive type of spirit. And that was some of my nature anyway. However, some of that backfired. And so what happens is a lot of times you find yourself, you end up being a doormat. And so it becomes very unhealthy, not just for you, but for the people you're around because you're actually enabling abuse. So I'm just going to give you an example. So we're getting ready to go into obesity and I'm getting ready to talk about weight here. I'm on my bike, y'all. I've been on this bike almost 12 minutes. Anyone that taps into my videos on a regular, I'm usually walking or on my bike. So that's what I'm doing right now. As I speak, I'm moving my legs. I have my sweet tea in my hand. I'm moving my legs. I'm holding something in my left hand so that I can, um, basically like a remote. Okay. So I'm holding so I can control the music that I play. Didn't y'all like the music? I hope you did. Okay. So going into the weight issue and as a disclaimer, this is not meant to offend anyone. I finally came to the point in my life where I struggled with the little extra weight. A lot of people gain this extra 20 or more pounds, 10 or more pounds during the pandemic. I found that a lot of people said, yeah, I put on 25 pounds because a lot of people were working at home. The fitness centers were closed. I mean, there was a lot of stuff closed and you couldn't have the physical activity that you once had. So now the pandemic is over and people are trying to get their weight back to normal. So I was having a discussion and, um, you know, I grocery shop. I usually uh, grocery shop every two to three days. I find myself going to the store and buying some groceries every two days. I like fresh produce and vegetables and things like that. I'm not one where I'm going to buy some broccoli or kale or tomatoes and cucumbers and I'm going to eat them a week later after I refrigerated them. When I buy my vegetables and produce, I eat those within that two days. Okay. So that way I'm getting the best quality of food. Okay. And freshness and all of that. I grew up in a restaurant, y'all, so I prefer fresh, good food. I don't like old, 
you know, bad taste in food. I just don't. So, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't eat. Um, I'm not someone where I'm going to have like ground beef and a bunch of red meat in the freezer. I don't eat red meat often, but I do eat it periodically. So through discussing things and when people say things, you know, you will know people that are around you that have a competitive nature. And one of the ways you will know that is if they're in a time of their life where themselves or the people in their family or people that are close to them are buying homes, cars, getting new jobs. I mean, the same stuff we got going on, okay? Then sometimes that can create more of a competitive nature. So we just always have to work and control that part of ourselves so that as we improve our finances, save more money, buy more homes, buy more cars, buy more nice clothes, we want to make sure we're not judging others. And the reason we don't want to judge others harshly is because just because you're high on the mountain right now, you got the top of the mountain and the bottom of the mountain. So you can go all the way to the top, but come back down to the bottom and you can fall down. See, you got millionaires that have lost it overnight, literally. Okay. And I mean, literally made the wrong business decision, the wrong financial move. And they were rich one day with a million dollars and broke the next. It has happened. People have walked into banks and they had a million dollars and suddenly they didn't have any of those funds in the bank anymore. So going into this obesity realm and discussing this. So um, I was talking to a friend and, um, and I love this particular friend because I love her ideas. She's more like a family member, kind of. So I love learning from her, right? And I hope that sometimes she can learn from me, hopefully. So people will notice, especially as we all mature, the way you do things. And one of the ways that I'm doing things is like right now I'm on this bike. I do walks. Growing up, I was an athletic girl. I was in dance. I was in color guard. I participated in parades, dance recitals, acting recitals, and things like that. So I was one of those type of teenagers. I could walk all the way to downtown St. Louis. Okay. And so my nature was very active. I was pretty much one of those active type of kids. I mean, we played outside, you know, this was back when there wasn't really cell phones. Okay. So, and you don't have to be very old for there not to have been cell phones. I mean, I remember what the first cell phone was like that I can remember around 1998. Okay. So you can be, I mean, at least 20 something and not have had a cell phone. Okay. So cell phones ain't really that new, new y'all. I mean, it's been out some years, but as far as I know, cell phones ain't a hundred years old. Okay. So, And, you know, this particular friend, she's she, she's openly, you want people that's honest, you know, that just say what they thinking sometimes. I mean, who wants a fake friend? So what she ain't is a fake friend. She's very upfront. So she mentioned, she said, um, and she said this before, you know, she's one of those ladies where she believes in just carrying her purse. Okay. She doesn't, she's not the construction labor type of girl, never has been. However, she will notice that I'm a little different. I mean, we can be on a phone call and I'm carrying one or two bags. And I mean, I may only have three items in the bag. I'm a backpack girl. I'll carry a backpack. 
Okay, so I can be sometimes kind of like an outdoor person, but I'm not an extreme outdoor person, if that makes sense. I'm kind of like, I like being outdoors, but then sometimes I don't. So I, I have that balance. So like she said, she wouldn't want to, you know, carry bags. And, and she mentioned that a lot of women lift a lot of heavy, heavy stuff. And I mean, I don't necessarily think men should be doing that. I mean, look at all the men that have um, illnesses that make them bedridden. I mean, you got to love yourself. And I know some men do it. They picking up 100 pounds, 50 pounds, or however much they picking up. But a lot of them are breaking their backs. They have herniated disc in their back. They have all kind of stuff, I mean, that can literally put them down. So when this particular friend mentions this, it's somewhat of a devaluation because, okay, I'm walking and I'm carrying this bag, but it's by choice. I could have easily, first of all, I'm down the street from my home. I could have easily gave that one bag that I had to one of my relatives, but I choose to carry it. It's just one little bag. So I made the comment to my friend. I said, well, I'm just not lazy like that. And she was like, yeah, I know. But, you know, it's just her belief she don't carry them. And um, this particular friend, you know, she suffered from obesity and so have I. Her obesity might have been a little bit more extreme. Um, I'm not morbid obese. However, she's gotten a lot of her weight down. She does some do some exercise and stuff like that. So... I keep it real with people. And so obesity can be a form of being very narcissistic just in general, because remember, obesity a lot of times involves delusions and fantasy. And one of the delusions is fantasy is, and I watched it, y'all. I watched my 600 pound life. And one woman on my 600 pound life, she called herself thick. You see the delusion and fantasy in that? And she believed that shit. She says she is thick. And the reason she said that is because that's what people have been telling her her whole life. Girl, you just thick. So I brought up to my friend. And hey, if it's offensive, it's offensive. But at the same time, it's not that offensive when I had went to the scale or went to the pharmacy and weighed in and it and I'm in the red and it said obesity. And that's why I began to get at least 18 to 20 pounds off of me. And that is why I do my videos on my bike or I do my videos while I'm walking. I'm not interested in doing a video just so you could see me. I'm interested in my health and promoting health for y'all. And I've said in another video, while you listening to this video, get on your bike also. So I just was honest with the sister. I said, that's why we have so much obesity. And I refuse to be this particular weight or this particular weight, I'm not going to say the weights because I don't want to offend anybody. However, this is what I'm going to tell you right now. The first step to controlling obesity is not to become not obese. The first step to controlling it is just not to get any bigger. Get you a digital scale at home. And have a five pound window. If your weight is 250 pounds, just make sure by the next day or when you eat, okay, because if you're 250 pounds, if you eat a meal once a day, that's all you should be eating anyway. All that you need three meals a day, they lie to you. One meal a day. And when you weigh in before you go to bed, it may say you're 250 pounds. By the next 24 hours or within 48 hours, that digital scale for you should go back to 250 pounds. 
So that's the first step to controlling morbid obesity is to not get bigger. And I've seen people my whole life, they be big women that are technically morbid obese women. However, their relatives and their friends will call them thick, but they ain't thick. They're actually morbidly obese. They're not fat neither. When you're fat or thick, you're not morbidly obese. You see the difference? So when you're morbidly obese, you are obese. You are more than just fat and thick, okay? And as I said, I actually saw that for myself where you put in your height, it weighs you and it will tell you what you are and it will blink red and it's gonna say you obese. Now in my case, because I'm not morbidly obese, which means I would need to be what another 25 pounds or 30 pounds over. I don't know what the, what the pounds are, but if you get online and you look up average weight for women, average weight for men, it will bring up a chart and say, if you're like five foot five, okay, six feet, however tall you are, whether you be male or female and you can check your height and it will give at least usually three categories. And the first category is the weight you should be, but it will give a, a window. So say for one particular height, you can be anywhere from 110 pounds to 140 pounds. So if you're within that window there, then you're not overweight then the middle section will be overweight or elevated weight. And then the third section is usually obese. And then sometimes it depends on the chart. Some of them will break it up in three parts. Some of them will break it up in four parts. But that last to the right is morbid obesity at the end of the day. Even if it doesn't say it on the chart, that's what it is. Okay, so... I was telling this particular sister, that's why it's so much obesity, okay? Because of this mindset, well, I need to have a husband to carry all my bags because I have children or relatives, especially if they're males, they got to carry all my bags. They got to do everything for me. And I don't live like that. I'll carry a bag like I'm one of the kids because I'm just not lazy like that. And I was telling my friend, one of the benefits I get, because she has empathy, she has some level of empathy. So one of the benefits I get from carrying one to two bags here and there is your arms build up. See, a lot of times we think that we just got to go to the gym to get some of that fat off your arm or just have more of a firm arm or whatever. No, just carry a couple of bags every day or so. Carry a backpack. Lift a bin that's 10 or 20 pounds. Lightweight lifting. I don't recommend tearing up your body whether you be male or female. So ultimately... That is why a lot of the narcissistic attitudes that go into weight and a lot of times people, they don't know how to handle judgment. So they try to fit in with somebody else's life. And the way I do things work, works for me, okay? And I wanna also point this out because I try to provide some level of evidence for the way I think and the way I do things. And I just want to let y'all know, even though I developed a little weight, I don't have any children that have ever suffered from morbid obesity. I have never had any child that got on a scale and it said that they were obese. And this is why. 
For one, it was the way they were raised. All of my children were in sports and activities. Even if they lived with their father, their father encouraged athletic activities. Okay, so I'm providing this information not to judge. If you have an obese child or a chubby child or something like that, I just want you to know that when I'm teaching in this area, there's some substance to it, okay? Now, any of my children could have easily been obese. It's in us to be obese. All I had to do was pump my child up with the extra calories, have them not in sports and things like that. And so I was pretty honest with the sister when I was explaining to her that the way women think, and sometimes men can think this way too, I'm adding that to this video, but I find it especially in women, especially in women, the attitude that I don't wanna lift or carry anything, I wanna be catered to, I want to be driven around all day. I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to walk. I'm just going to have this man or my sons or my daughters do all of this for me. And that is what it leads to. My mom went through a stage in her life where she became very obese and she had got a lot of weight on her. She got some of it off. However, one of my mom's issues was being homebound. And my mom got to the point where she loved having things delivered to the house. Okay, this was before we even had an Amazon. My mom was having stuff delivered to the house. And that lifestyle did nothing for my mother's weight. She continued to get bigger and bigger. And so that is why I'm so kind of rigid with a number, like, because for one, I know just from what I went through with getting 18 to 20 pounds off, it's not always that easy to get it off. And so that's one thing I learned. And I'm almost happy that I had the experience because I can talk about it and like teach you something about it. So carry a bag. It's okay. Don't, don't compare yourself to others' lives. And what I did is I felt in some way, you know, the sister, she's just noticing that I do things different, but also she's devaluing what I do in some way, in a subtle way, or noticing that the way I do it is different. However, as an empath, we're always going to be judged for the way we do things. However, the narcissistic attitude doesn't allow people to notice the benefits that we receive. Or sometimes they may notice the benefits we're receiving. They may notice that you carry bags and you walk through the park in the neighborhood. And for some of you, you never got obese. You never got overweight. You never had an elevated blood pressure or weight. So to maintain your relationships and make them healthier, be honest with people. You do not have to let people devalue you, whether it be in a subtle way. Speak up for what you're doing. Yes, I love carrying this bag. I love the night air. I love being on this bike right now. I love the walk because it's keeping my blood pressure down. And as I said earlier, this isn't to offend anybody. Oh, and I also pointed out to bring up, I never had any obese children. I brought that up to let you know this. I may not be no fitness trainer or nothing like that, but I do know something about weight. And I never encourage my children they always knew about healthy foods and working out and stuff like that and for some of my kids it just came natural 
but I never was the type of mom, like you're not getting ready to eat up eight bags of cookies a day. For one, I'm not buying them, right? So I was one of those parents also where groceries are part of the budget and it's a bill. The groceries for the whole household is a bill for me. And I wasn't going to let no child have me with no $8,000 bill at the end of the month because they eating what they want to. And plus, I just wouldn't allow a child. That's like murdering your child, allowing them to become morbidly obese. Now, there's a difference between, you know, a child being a little chubby and morbidly obese. And if you're going through that with children in the family, hey, somebody that's morbidly obese, child or not, they shouldn't be eating no more than one meal a day. So if that child is morbidly obese, you got to stop that. They need breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They don't. They need one credible meal. And that meal should mostly involve vegetables. That's just my thoughts. I watch a lot of those shows with the kids that suffer from morbid obesity. And I watched the kids just struggle to get the weight down. And it's because even some of the doctors wasn't telling the parents that that child does not need three meals a day if they that big. And then those kids weren't working out and stuff like that. So... That's just my take on this. And I just want you to understand too, that remember there's a narcissistic attitude that goes in health and fitness. And that's the bad end of it. Now, there can be a empathetic attitude that can serve you better. So do not let nobody devalue you and encourage you or make you feel like just because you're a lady, you shouldn't carry a bag. Because at the end of the day, when you carry a lightweight bag or whatever, those are calories that you're burning. And you need to burn those calories so that you can maintain your current weight and get some of the weight off and also build your arms up. So, that's why I do it because it benefits me. And also during the pandemic, I had developed this um, left wrist ache, right? And it was, I don't know what it was. It still acts up. It, my wrist got sprained basically. It basically I injured it somewhat. It's my left wrist. I was um, trying to get up out of something. I remember that. And, and so it injured. So I noticed that when I started using this hand more, because on my bike, I have these things I can pull and exercise, that problem kind of cleared up. So I cleared that wrist ache up through not carrying nothing too heavy, but just using the wrist. So I'm giving you an example of carrying a lightweight bag may be what your wrist and hands need so that you don't have arthritis and things like that. So don't be afraid to give the information out to people, you know, because a lot of times people won't tell you this. That sister may go and she may go tell somebody, yeah, you know, sister such and such. She mentions that she's proud to carry that lightweight bag because it helps with her arms and it helps with her weight and it helps her stay active and healthy. And so that is the reason my lifestyle is the reason I never developed morbid obesity. It was because I did little things like that. I walked. Hey, I've been on this bike almost 40 minutes, y'all. And so because of those things, I ended up having a better outcome with my weight. And so I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. And... I will be uploading. I try to upload every day, or if I don't upload upload for a day, I apologize for that. If I don't upload for a day, I try to make it up in the next couple of days. So 
I love y'all so, so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please leave a comment and tune in for more here with Advanced Insight. I got so much more coming for you and carry those lightweight bags, walk, get on that exercise bike because we want to fight the narcissism and the narcissistic attitude that comes along with morbid obesity. If you're struggling to get the weight off, just say to yourself, I'm not gonna gain any more weight. That's the least you can do for your health is just not to get any bigger, okay? Get you a digital scale and I love y'all so, so much. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to my regular viewers, especially. Please leave a comment and thank you. Bye.